So digitalization has created many exciting opportunities and improved Singaporeans' lives. There are many examples of fellow Singaporeans embracing digital and harnessing opportunities. One was in the video we just watched. Ms. Shakila Sham owns Eats 19, a fusion restaurant. She decided to install a mobile ordering and payment solution which allow her customers to review the menu and order even before arriving at the restaurant so they can avoid the queue. This way, the customer is happy and she was able to improve her operations with the data generated. Most importantly, she added convenience, make work more enjoy enjoyable for Shakila's wheelchair-bound employee, Susie, who can now manage the ordering platform online from home. An example is Madam Santia Santil Kumar, an avid self-learner. She attends coding classes with her son in the library. This way, she can bond with her family and pick up a new skill in the process. She was able to apply her new skill to guide her son in coding his own games. Sir, there are many more Shakilas and Santias out there. Helping them to do well is what drives all of us at MCI. This COS, we will share with you MCI's efforts to do so. I'll talk about our plans to develop our digital economy and enhance the digital readiness of Singaporeans. SMS Journey will elaborate on how workers, businesses, and citizens can benefit from our digital economy and digital readiness efforts. SMS Chi will explain MCI's efforts to transform and grow the media sector. And I'll run out by sharing the wonderful transformation of our libraries, which inspire us all. So let me begin with the digital economy. Digital transformation is the most important issue facing our businesses today. The Singapore Business Federation recent study showed that the majority of our businessmen fully appreciate the importance of digitalization because the payoffs are enormous. Microsoft's recent study estimated that the digital economy would contribute another US $10 billion to our GDP by 2021. This is the context of our Smart Nation initiative. Good jobs and opportunities for our people. Mr. Zaki Muhammad asked what the government is doing to ensure that Singapore businesses and workforce can thrive in the digital future. My answer is ABC. Accelerate the digitalization of existing sectors, build up the Infocom Media or ICM companies, and create future digital technology sectors. Let me explain. Firstly, A accelerate the digitalization of existing sectors. Digitalization affects every sector, but not all of the sectors have responded equally quickly. Some sectors like banking and finance and retail have done relatively well. So during my recent visit to NTUC Fairprice new Living Lab supermarket at Singpo Center, I saw how Fairprice had transformed its traditional supermarket using innovative retail technologies to revolutionize the shopping experience to meet changing consumer expectations and habits in the digital age while boosting workers' productivity. But there are other sectors that are finding it more difficult to keep up. Members ask how the government can help SMEs benefit from digitalization. So allow me to first share the common challenge that SMEs face in going digital. One reason why some sectors are unable to transform digitally is knowledge. Even if companies are keen to embrace digital, they do not know how to or where to start. This is particularly true for our SMEs, which sometimes lack the resources and the scale to deploy digital solutions. And that is why we launched the SME Go Digital program last year, which for a start focuses on key sectors where digital technologies can improve productivity significantly. This includes providing step-by-step -step guidance under the Industry Digital Plans, or IDPs, to make digitalization simpler for our SMEs. We have since launched the Retail and Logistics IDPs last November, and we aim to do more this year. So members asked about the outcomes of our initiative to help SMEs digitalize. Even though the program has been operational for only less than a year, we are seeing encouraging results. More than 650 SMEs have benefited from the program, and many more are waiting in line. A beneficiary of the pre-approved digital solution under the program is House of Seafood, a restaurant chain and food manufacturer. It exports its products to many countries, However, each country has its own import requirements and it was difficult to track all of them efficiently. So the company installed a digital tagging solution to automate the compliance checks for its many products. House of Seafood is now able to export its products more easily and has grown its sales by 20% and productivity by 25%. Another example, sir, is OKH Logistics. The complexity of the logistics business cannot be underestimated. So the company adopted an intelligent vehicle monitoring system to operate his vehicles better. By analyzing the data collected, he was able to significantly reduce the number of vehicles accidents by 50%. Fewer vehicle accidents mean better utilization of assets, and this led to about 10% increase 
and the number of deliverers handle a day. So we will continue to grow the SME Go Digital program and we aim to benefit many more SMEs and to do so, we fully agree with Mr. Sio Salak that we must ensure that our programs remain relevant in a fast-changing environment. We will review regularly the IDPs and the pre-approved solutions in the SME Go Digital program to ensure that they are in line with the latest industry trends and standards while meeting SME's needs. Mr. Zaki Muhammad asked what more can be done to help our SMEs seize the opportunities in digital. Ms. San Su Ling asked if we could engage influential partners to help drive digitalization within sectors. One initiative we are pursuing is to focus not just on individual solutions for individual SMEs, but to take a cluster approach by working with influential partners to help a group of SMEs from similar sectors. So for example, in the logistics sector, the Infocom Media Development Authority, or IMDA, is working with major logistic companies, Bolloré Logistics, Dimaco, and SCH Lockton, to lead their SME clients through the digitalization process using a cloud-based e-cargo consolidation platform. This aggregates freight demands, thereby lowering freight costs for SME freight forwarders. This initiative will be launched in April, and for a start, over 100 SMEs are expected to benefit from this project. We'll do more such projects in the coming year. Ms. San Suling asks, what sector-level initiatives do we have to drive digitalization on a broader scale? Last year, IMDA launched various, initiative, various innovative initiatives to support the digital transformation of both the logistic and retail sectors. As part of our efforts in the retail sector, we are collaborating with Spring, the Singapore Malay Chambers of Commerce and Industry, or SMCCI, and one Kampung Glam Association to develop Kampung Glam into Singapore's first digitally enabled retail neighborhood. So what does this mean? We will help interested merchants in the core area of Kampung Glam, comprising about 200 merchants, adopt digital solutions to improve their business operation. This would include adopting integrated point of sale systems which enable cashless payments, inventory tracking, and financial accounting. By automating these back-end administrative processes, the merchants will have more time for their products and customers. We are working with StarHub on these business solutions for the merchants. We're also enhancing the visitor experience by developing digital products such as immersive walking trails and working with the Masjid Polytechnic School of Business to increase merchants' online presence. We are partnering Grab to offer an additional cashless option and increase accessibility to the area. After all, the shops will benefit from more customers enjoying themselves in Kambungla. So we will launch phase one of the transformation, second quarter of 2018. We will show to invite Ms. Denise Paul for that. And learning from the Kampung Glam project, we'll explore how we could develop other projects to digitalize the retail sector. Let me also take this opportunity, sir, to thank the leadership of One Kampung Glam Association and SMCCI for their support. Another way we are accelerating the sector digitalization is to put in place common infrastructure that will raise business productivity. One such project is e-invoicing. Invoices are critical functions for businesses. Without an invoice, Businesses do not get paid, but invoicing can be very tedious and manual with many inherent errors. E-invoicing can change that. It can help businesses cut costs, <coughs> ensure companies are paid faster, and open up new financing options. We are currently studying, currently studying this with companies and will announce more details later. So I shall move on to B, build up our ICM companies. This is necessary because we have a strong ICM sector to support businesses with good products we will not go very far in our digitalization journey. In this respect, we want to have homegrown ICM companies along with other companies supporting the sector. Mr. Zaki Mohammed asked about the plans to grow the ICM sector. IMD has already launched the ICM Industry Transformation Map, or ITM, last year. Under our ITM, we aim to create 13,000 new PMET jobs, and the industry's value added is expected to grow at around 6% annually. We will do this by building up our workforce and helping our companies <coughs> internationalize. Most importantly, as digitalization blurs traditional industry boundaries, we will help our companies reinvent themselves. Several ICM companies have already done so. One example is Y3 Technologies, a software solutions provider specializing in supply chain management solutions. In recent years, Y3 has transformed itself by moving away from just supply chain management to an innovative analytics service provider. 
thanks to its proprietary software, it now has 24 by 7 visibility of all customer orders, can handle a larger volume of orders and reduce incidents of wrong delivery. It has also used analytic software products to diversify into complementary areas such as e-commerce. So we will do more to help our companies transform themselves like y -Tree. <clears throat> Today, IMDA runs the accreditation at SG Digital, which helps to scale innovative Singapore-based ICM companies to build deep capabilities locally and grow internationally. Currently, sir, we have 24 <coughs> accredited companies. We will quadruple this in five years and avail more support to help them grow, including building their track record, assisting them to grow new growth capital and helping them to expand overseas. In the case of SES InfoSys, an accredited local data analytics startup, IMDA support in securing funding and facilitating key partnerships had contributed to the company's overseas expansion and impressive growth. One way to build stronger ICM companies is to help them collaborate with end users to build new and innovative solutions with potential to be scaled and exported. This might not be that easy with digitalization blurring the lines between sectors, which creates the need to solve problems that cut across many sectors and disciplines. So IMDA will pilot the Open Innovation Platform, which is a crowdsourcing platform to facilitate collaboration between problem owners and a community of solution providers to co-develop digital solutions that address actual business problems. IMDA will focus their efforts in selected sectors first, including retail and logistics, to build up a community of solution providers. IMD will bring expertise in technology areas such as artificial intelligence, AI, and the Internet of Things, IoT, to see how they can apply their technologies to business use cases. So the final trust to build the digital economy is C, create future digital technology sectors. Last year, I announced that we will invest in developing deeper capabilities in four frontier technology areas, data analytics and artificial intelligence, or AI, the Internet of Things or IoT, cybersecurity, and immersive media. I also announced a series of AI and data analytics initiatives. As part of our ICM ITM, IMDA launched the AI Business Partnership Program last November to bring companies interested in AI and AI solution providers together. Although it is early days, IMDA has received promising problem statements from businesses across various sectors and is currently reviewing potential partnerships for co-funding. IMD will share more details in the coming months. IMD also launched the AI Apprenticeship Program with AI Singapore to develop AI professionals through training courses. To date, the program has received overwhelming support, and the first batch of 20 trainees will start training in May. <coughs> Mr. Sridik Fu asked what Singapore is doing to prepare itself for the digital economy, including giving enterprises access to data sets for machine learning applications. So the Data Innovation Program Office, or DEPO under IMDA, is trying to bring companies together to realize the value of sharing data and brokering partnership for mutual gain. For instance, the government has been actively improving data.gov.sg, its one-stop public portal for government data sets, to include more useful data sets to enable businesses and citizens to co-create solutions using them. We are also reviewing the Personal Data Protection Act to keep pace with technological developments and regulatory trends to facilitate businesses' use of personal data while safeguarding consumers' trust. So besides AI and IoT, we see great promise in cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is integral to the digital economy. As more services and transactions take place online, it becomes even more important that they are digitally secure and reliable. Cybersecurity is thus a cornerstone of trust in our Smart Nation initiative. Ms. Sun Shuling asks if there are plans to assist businesses, including SMEs, and educate the public on how to prevent and respond to cybersecurity attacks. We are indeed doing so. So for instance, the Cyber Security Agency, or CSA, is partnering the Association for Information Security Professionals, or AISP, to equip our SMEs with cybersecurity knowledge so they can better respond to cybersecurity threats like the ransomware attacks last year. CSA also works with partners such as the Personal Data Protection Commission to raise awareness of the importance of cybersecurity and personal data, prote personal data protection among our students and with IMDA and the National Library Board to provide our seniors 
with Infocom training, which includes cybersecurity. So I agree with Mr. Zaki Muhammad that a vibrant cybersecurity ecosystem is an important factor contributing to robust national cybersecurity. Besides undergirding the digital economy, cybersecurity is also a growth engine. Cybersecurity in Singapore is a fast-growing sector with the potential to generate $900 million in revenue by 2020. This will create many ex exciting opportunities and jobs for Singaporeans. City Singapore is one such company contributing to the cybersecurity ecosystem in our country. Not many members may know this, but the bank has established one of its two global security operations centers in Singapore, the other being in New York. And I visited the Singapore Centre about two weeks ago. And there, I met Mr Fadil Sidi, who I have mentioned in my CEO speech two years back. Back then, he had overcome the disappointment of being rejected by Polytechnic and was working towards a cybersecurity degree. Fadli is now a cyber threat intelligence analyst in City, and he is doing well. So I was happy to see Fadli doing well and want to help more Singaporeans interested in cybersecurity and pursue their passions. CSA will work with other partners to do so. First, CSA and IMDA are supporting the development of the innovation cybersecurity ecosystem at Block 71, or ICE. This initiative will be done with NUS and Singtel Innov8 and will help promising cybersecurity startups scale and internationalize. Second, CSA will introduce a core innovation and development proof of concept funding scheme to support the development of cybersecurity solutions for national security, critical infrastructure, and classified system users. This will catalyze the commercialization and adoption of cybersecurity solutions to address emerging needs. In addition to cybersecurity, we also invest to build up immersive media capability in Singapore, or IAM for short, as we see this as another promising area. So we aim to be the center of excellence in the development and the use of IAM-based applications in key industries, including engineering, media, retail, and education, and we will focus on three areas. First, we will advocate for IAM adoption by facilitating business matching and information sharing to raise awareness on IAM's potential. Second, to build innovation capacity by encouraging experimentation and the development of proof of concepts. And third, to develop talent for the IAM industry. SMSG will share some of efforts to build IAM capabilities in his speech. We will announce more details of our plans for IAM in the upcoming months. But for now, we have put together an IAM exhibit for members to experience how IAM can transform the way we live and work in the digital future. So to achieve these ABCs, we need several enablers. The first and most important is a strong workforce with the relevant expertise and skills. Two years ago, I launched the Tech Skills Accelerator, or TESA. Since then, we have had an excellent progress. As Minister Hing mentioned in his budget speech, over 27,000 training places have been taken up or committed. <coughs> One such beneficiary is Mr. Mohammad Ruzaini. Ruzaini was retrenched in 2015 after eight years in the industry. As he was interested in cybersecurity, he tried to join the industry after his retrenchment. <coughs> However, he did not succeed as he lacked the formal training and qualification. Fortunately, he persisted and joined the CSET program under NCS, where he picked up new cybersecurity skills. He is now a cybersecurity professional working for NCS. So the government will invest another $145 million to scale up TESA over the next three years. This will create another 20,000 training places by 2020, including in new sectors like manufacturing and professional services. This will allow us to further develop our workforce for the digital economy. Besides people, we also need to review our regulations in a fast-changing world to ensure that they remain pro-business and fit for purpose. Mr. Ong Teng Kun asked how IMDA will address the regulatory challenges in the converged ICM environment. So IMDA has been studying very carefully how to harmonize the approaches for the telecommunications and broadcast sectors in areas such as competition, consumer protection, and resilience. We believe that a converged competition and consumer protection code will provide clarity to industry, minimize regulatory overheads while continuing to protect public interests. One salient issue in the converged ICM space is how digital technologies and social media platforms have come together to worsen the risk of fake news. This was an area that MCI was studying in our review of the Broadcasting Act. 
However, as Parliament has just appointed the Select Committee on Deliberate Online Falsehoods to examine the issue, it would be better to study the Select Committee's recommendations first before making further moves. MCI's, MCI will thus be deferring the review of the Broadcasting Act. Dr. Teo Hopin asked if there are plans to introduce regulations for EI application. Currently, sir, we have no such plans as the field is still nascent and we want to avoid stifling innovation. But we do acknowledge public anxiety about AI. IMD is working with sector regulators to study issues and mitigate potential risks from deploying AI. Besides talent and regulations, another enabler for a thriving digital economy is a conducive, rule-based international environment. And that is why we have advocated open data flows and facilitated cyber norm discussions in ASEAN. As ASEAN chairman this year, we will commit to improving digital literacy in ASEAN to help our people reap the benefits of digitalization. Beyond ASEAN, we are also participating fully in international mechanisms to provide digital flows. Last year, I announced our intention to join the APEC cross-border privacy rules and privacy recognition processes systems two multilateral certification mechanisms to promote cross-border data flows. So I'm pleased to announce that our application was approved on the 20th of February, 2018. When our certification scheme is in place, certified organizations in Singapore will be able to exchange personal data with certified organizations in participating APEC economies much more seamlessly, while consumers can be assured that the cross-border transfer of their personal data will be subject to high standards of data protection. So even as we grow the digital economy pie, we must ensure that everyone gets a slice of it and that no one is left behind. And that is the main focus of our digital readiness efforts. Ultimately, Smart Nation is not just a series of technology projects. It is a whole of nation movement to improve the lives of all Singaporeans in the digital age. As Mr. Vivian had said earlier, our approach will therefore be inclusive by design. Mr. Saktendi Supan asked about the Digital Readiness Work Group and its proposed strategies to improve digital readiness among Singaporeans. We have set out a digital readiness blueprint to give every Singaporean digital access, which means to transact digitally. Digital literacy, the skills, attitudes, and values of a digital citizen, and digital participation, the ability to make use of technology to improve daily life. SML Janil will elaborate later on this. So the possibilities of the digital future are endless. It is up to us to seize them. Everyone will have a role to play in our broader digital transformation. And we at MCI will work with everyone to ensure that we all gain from this shared journey. Thank you.